Dana shut down the uh, top scoring team in the Mid-American Conference and they had you kind of all over the field following 23. Uh, talk about your game today. Well, I think that was a, I mean, we knew that it was going to be tough. They obviously have scored a lot of goals this season. So um, we knew coming in, we were going to have someone marker the whole game. So I was pretty much on her and um, uh, we knew their team like looked to go through her. So I think it helped having someone on her because they didn't, I mean, she, was, she wasn't really open nearly as much. So I think um, we did a good job like keeping her kind of out of the game and then just sticking to play our, playing our game. What made the back four so effective today, not just you specifically, but it, the, the starting four really seemed to dominate from start to finish? Yeah, I mean, I think we came out with a lot of energy. We've had a good, hard practice week, and um, I think we were all talking. We knew it was going to be tough for us, mainly, so we just... And we didn't want to let anything up. We had a shutout on Friday. When we wanted to keep it going, and we knew they were like the top team in our our side of the division as well. So we knew it was going to be a battle. Nice to see uh, a bounce go your way. What was your reaction to the the goal that happened? I honestly like couldn't believe it. I like thought for a split second it might go overhead, but I was like, no way. And then when someone else kind of tapped it in, I honestly was, I was just shocked. I was like, no way. Like, because we had so many chances the whole game, and for that to be the one we scored on, I mean, I'll take it <laughs> at that point. Actually, is that how you're, uh, you figured your first collegiate goal would play out? Uh, actually, no, not at all. I mean, I was trying to find my teammate, Rachel Marble, and then, I don't know, like, it just kind of played it to her, and it just bounced over the keeper's head. So. You came in pretty much cold right off the bench at the start of overtime. What did uh, Coach say to you as you stepped onto the field for the first time? They just said to go out there and work hard. It was only, you know, 10 minutes, and so they just said to go out there and work your hardest, and so I was like, all right, I can do that. I can do it. Uh, Vic, talk about the play of you in the back four. It seemed a pretty dominant defensive effort all the way around today. Yeah, we um, we had a plan going into the game. We knew which player we wanted to keep an eye on. So we had one person marking her and the other one kind of shifting back and forth, covering for that player. So we knew what we were doing, um, and we executed it really well. So I was really happy with the back four today, and our outsides did a really good job tracking their vertical runs down the line. So this marks your sixth shutout of the season. How does it feel to be playing so well? Um, it's really exciting. I owe a lot to my def defenders and my midfielders, and all the way, really all the way up the line, because it starts all the way up the field, the defense. So I owe a lot to them. I didn't even have to do too much today. They made it pretty easy for me. I got a shot right at me, and then I had to just come out for a little collapse dive. So I owe a lot to them, and I'm just really excited for the rest of the season. Coach, after uh, all the chances that you generated through the first 90 minutes, I guess the uh, soccer gods must have owed you one with that one in overtime, huh? Maybe so. Uh, you know, it's it's. I, I don't want to say it's a shame. I, I feel like it was a fair result. I, I thought we were the better team for for most of the game, but all credit to Kent. Uh, they just really pushed us to the edge today. Fine team, some very talented players, well organized, and uh, you know, feel very fortunate to uh, have been able to take this one in overtime. Kent State came in as the highest scoring team in the MAC. Talk about the play of your back four, especially Dana Miller in particular, seemed to be all over the field. Un following unbelievable, I'll tell you what, uh, Dana was just matched up with, uh, with their number 23, who is a terrific player all day long, and boy, did she battle, fight, compete. Very, very proud of Dana, and, and Jess Bronke was right there with her, uh, good wingman the whole way. Really proud of all of our back four. What was going through your head when after 14 shots, you had no goals at regulation, but then somehow that ball bounced over the keeper's net and trickled into the goal? Well, you know, I, so first of all, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'll take it any way I can get it, all right? But it's kind of a shame that a, a, a game as well played as this one would have to end on on a goal like that, you know. But uh, you know, maybe maybe Chad's right. Maybe they owe this one.